Hey, good afternoon. We're starting with our Bible study on the book of Matthew, and we're in the first chapter, and it starts speaking of Jesus' genealogy. And if you look at the first and second verse, you can see that God's word is true because Jesus, this is a genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And if you look at it, the first thing in verse 2, it says, Abraham was the father of Isaac. And you can go from Isaac on, and you'll see it goes down, goes down. And if you look at who the Lord has in his genealogy, there were some great men in Jesus' genealogy also. And why wouldn't there be when the Messiah is in your genealogy? There was Isaac, there was Jacob, uh, Judah. You have Ram, oh, you got Boaz, oh my, you got Jesse, uh-oh, and Jesse was the father of who? King David, um, then you got Solomon, and it just goes on and on, and then you get to Jacob. Mm. A lot of people thought it fell through Mary, but no. Jacob was in this lineage, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, and who was Joseph? Joseph was Mary's husband. So it followed Abraham's seed on the father's side. Jesus was the son of Joseph, who was all these great, 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 greats of Abraham, and Mary was his mother, as we all know. And Jesus is and was and is the Messiah. And it tells you there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from exile to the Messiah. So the Lord was working with something here. It was 14 and 14 and 14. And then it says... This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. And it speaks to how he was born. And Jesus says his mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. So the Lord had a divine inter intervention with this young lady. Because he wanted Jesus to be born through Joseph and his wife. And Mary was special. Not that she is prayed to, but she was a special vessel. And people mistake her being a special vessel that God used, because we are all special vessels, vessels if we let the Lord use us. She wasn't to be prayed to. She was just a special, special vessel chosen by God. And the Lord had to convince Joseph not to be afraid to take Mary home as his wife. It tells you that. It tells you that in verse 20. And it tells him then in 21 that she's going to have a son. And he was told what to name the child. Now, if you sit back, and especially for men, I know miss, most men's pride would be going crazy. We don't even want to take care of a, a child sometime who has a different father when we are with the mother. But how Joseph felt probably was the same way we felt. How can this be? Why should I do this? But he had to be told and he had to be taught because this was a, a thing of accepting. This was a thing of faith. And hey, Mary was a virgin. So how could she be pregnant? It had to be divine. And this is something that we need to step out of the way of sometimes and let God be God. There are some divine interventions that the Lord does that we have no knowledge of and just should accept. If you don't believe me, 
If you can look in your mirror right now, there's a divine intervention because he woke you up today. You can see today. So, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. And this was in the Old Testament when they spoke of it. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then it tells you Joseph woke up. He did not. He he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Obedience. He was obedient. So he had to have some faith. He was obedient. And you could tell from his lineage that they had all had faith and they had been obedient. And they weren't perfect, but they were a heart of God, a friend of God. Just look at the lineage it tells you there. But he did not consummate their marriage until he gave birth to a son. Mary was not touched in the consummation form of the marriage, the, the physical intercourse way to consummate a marriage until she gave birth of the son. So Mary was a virgin completely. Not just she was a virgin when the Spirit came upon her. She was a virgin until after Jesus' birth. So, Joseph, mm, he was a pretty humble dude, too. Had to be, because that would take a lot, I'm sure. A lot of men are out there saying, yeah, that would take a lot. But, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, hey, we had a king. His name was Herod. He won a good character. He was out there looking for this dude. He was looking for Jesus. He wanted him because he, you know, they said Jesus was going to be born king of the Jews. And that wasn't what Herod wanted. Herod wanted to be the king of everybody. <laughs> so Herod sent some people out trying to find him. Jesus was protected. The Lord protects those he loves. Sad thing is he loves us all and we don't all recognize that. But the Lord protected him. And as the story goes and as we break down this later on this week, we'll talk about the Magi that came. But the funny thing is, Herod was looking for something that wasn't there. Herod's mind was in the earthly mindset. King of the Jews, rich, money, wealthy, all these things that a king would be in our minds. And the Lord had a different definition of the king. Uh -uh. He was not what Herod was expecting, nor could Herod truly find him because he was looking for something that he didn't understand. Now, just to let you know, we'll continue tomorrow and we'll start on the Magi and we'll see how far this goes back to who protected Jesus and who brought gifts to Jesus, I should say. And this was from a while back. This These Magi came back from a ways ago. Um, and you'll see who their queen was and what was told to them. So... Tomorrow, our Bible study will continue with the book of Matthew. Amen.